Yeah. Uh, Sister Baker, th uh, thank you for praying that prayer. Uh, God is, uh, you, because you know the situation, I, I thought, I felt, I, I was going to, but I thought you uh, know more uh, distinctly about this, the, uh, you could pray more directly, actually. So, and uh, I had written here, when you set your heart to put God's wants first, he will honor you. And I think we need those that are in this, the education system that are believers. God will honor you when you put him first because you are his chosen vessels in that position. And he will honor your prayers and your, your heart's cry. So I praise God for, for the prayer that Sister Franker prayed because I know that was God's heart. Uh, education must begin with God. <laughs> that is so, I mean, that's, that's it. It begins with him. If it doesn't begin with him, then you're not being educated properly. You're just receiving, you know, a lot of knowledge, empty knowledge, but it must begin with him. What do you think of when you think of of the education system. When you think of education, what do you think of? Do you think of uh, the universities, the colleges, school buildings, classrooms, the teachers, the professors? When you think of education, a lot of people, that's where their focus is. That's what they think of. It's synonymous with education. It's the, uh, the place where you receive your education. But I thought, I'm thinking it should begin with God. Education must begin with him. He is the creator. He create, he, knowledge comes from God. Eh? All knowledge that's uh, of any purpose, any worth comes from God. And so we must seek him first. When, uh, when brother and, and sister uh, Morris, uh, they uh, continued their education, they had taken courses uh, to, to better their education and just, uh, just to improve their knowledge. They, uh, it was a hard task for anybody in the older, uh, age group, anybody mature that's going for further education, it's always more challenging for them. And so I'm sure they met up with a lot of, uh, of uh, challenges that they faced, but they pursued it and were successful in, in their endeavors. And the only way they were successful, reason why they were successful is because who do you think why? Well, it's because they put God first, okay? They put God first. And when you put him first, he makes a way where there is no way. We've heard that through the songs that were sung this morning and the prayers that went out. He is all knowledge. It flows from him. He is perfect in knowledge, the scriptures say. So if you need anything, if you want to know anything, the one to go to is the Lord. And there's a, a Solomon, he was the wisest man that ever lived. And I wanted to, to read you uh, what Solomon asked the Lord. And it's in 1 Kings 3, 5 to 15. Some writings say that he was 12 years old when he came to the throne, and others say 20. But I, I have attended, I, as I read it to you, you will probably agree that it seems he was probably only 12 years old. There's a, a line, a verse here that kind of uh, gives that away. Okay, 1 Kings 3, 5 to 15. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and God said, ask what I shall give you. 
And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to go govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches of the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been, uh, none like you has been before, before you and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honors, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Now, like I said, he, I'm sure he was only 12 years old, but it, it appears that he, he died in his, uh, before he even reached 60 years of age, which uh, I was surprised to, to find out that he didn't leave, live a very long life. But I think he reigned for about 39 years as king in, in, uh, in Jerusalem and Judea, Judah. Uh, but he was a man that wanted, sought God first and wanted to honor him. And when you honor God, he will honor you. Another scripture I wanted to read, these uh, Proverbs was our scriptures uh, that were, most of them were by Solomon. And so, and since Solomon, God gave him such wisdom and such knowledge and how to handle situations. I mean, what, what more do we need to, to fill ourselves with and our hearts with and our, and our, and our thinking with? but the teachings and the training from Solomon, who was the wisest man that ever lived. And no one has ever reached that level of wisdom that Solomon had. My son, this is Proverbs. Unfortunately, I did not write, I think it's three. Yes, Proverbs three. Verse one, my son or daughter, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Quit or leave thee entirely. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. You see, when God is educating us, he con his concern is with our, the whole person. He sees the whole of man, his crown creation, not just his mind and how much knowledge he can have. He's given man a soul and a heart. They need nourishing too. 
and a body. He is extremely balanced. God is an, a balanced God. He, he sees the whole man, the whole person, and everything that he does, he's, he's focusing on all of man, not just certain areas or certain things having to do with man. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. So you notice he says paths, not direct thy path. Paths, plural, not just one path. All of your paths of your life, he will direct. There's a love that just emanates from these words. He loves us so. There's something about the human spirit God has put in man that is God-like. Because we are connected to him, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. He's our creator. He created man in his own image and likeness because of the sin Adam committed, the seed lost its life, it died. Genesis 2, 17 said, God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And that's what happened. So everyone born into the world after Adam were born of corruptible seed. We all need to be born again. We truly are an amazing creation. We are so connected to him, we're one with him. Jesus says in John 14, 20, at that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. God can't even, can't even make a move. We can't even make a move, but God is right there when we're walking in right standing with him. Verse seven, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. See how our health is so interwoven in what we fill our minds with. His concern is for the whole man because that's the way he sees us. He is not limited like we are. We only see the natural man when we see each other, but God sees inside. He sees, sees us in, in a complete way. And he says in Psalms 32, eight and nine, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. See, that's so beautiful. Do not be as the horse or as the mule, which has no understanding, whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come or stay near you. It's so important. Only God can put our, our priorities correct. You know, if your heart is determined to do what you want to do and you have your own agenda and what, what's important in life for you, then God, you're, you have free will to do that. But I pray that you see the importance of putting God first. Because when you set your heart to put God's wants before your own, he will honor you. And he will open doors that no man can shut and close doors that no man can open. There's a... Uh, um, There's some healing scriptures concerning our health care that I want to, to share. You know, I find that when I, 
when I uh, share what God's word is saying as opposed to my own thinking, I think it ministers more because he's in his word and he mm. watches over his word to perform it. And so I want that this morning. I want you to hear his heart. I want you to hear him. Exodus 15, 26 says, he said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, I mean, at a time like this, what is more <laughs> so appropriate, so right to, to feed on today than these words from our Heavenly Father? He's speaking to us. And he brings healing to his people. He's brings, he brings healing to us. Exodus 23, 25, and 26. Worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. Deuteronomy 7.15, the Lord will keep you free from every disease. The Lord will keep you free from every disease. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalms 20, uh, 34, 19 to 20, a righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Proverbs 41, 1 to 3, for the director of music, a psalm of David. Blessed is he who has regard for the weak, that the Lord delivers him in times of trouble. The Lord will protect him and preserve his life. He will bless him in the land and not surrender him to the desire of his foes. The Lord will sustain him on his sickbed and restore him from his bed of illness. Uh, how encouraging that is. Receive this today. Hallelujah. Psalms 91, 14 to 16. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. Listen to this. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalms 103, 1 to 5 of David. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And that, don't we need that today? Don't we need our youth to be renewed like the eagles, our strength to be re uh, renewed? Psalms 107, 19 to 20. When they cried to the Lord in their trouble, excuse me. Okay, where was that? Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their di distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Hallelujah, Father. Psalms 118, 17. I will not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Let's shout that, shout that from the rooftops today. No matter what the world is, is raging in, no matter what 
the pandemics, no matter what the enemy is putting before our face day after day and <laughs> bombarding our ears with, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Pro Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. I love that. Listen closely to my words. Not just listen to my words, but listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Wow. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And we know who our hope is. It eh? God is our hope. Yes. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The, pun pardon me, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Healing is ours, my brothers and sisters. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. Receive healing through these scriptures this morning. Praise God. When you set your heart to put God's wants first, he will honor you. Amen. That's what I wanted to share this morning. I pray that it 